Hi everyone, my name is Eduardo Lev. I'm a programmer with Cohort 15. This tutorial will hopefully show you how to implement a simple AI pawn and controller pair for use in a mod. Um, uh, this tutorial assumes that you have nFringe installed in Visual Studio 2010 and that you have uh, your project properly set up so you, that you can access the UDK game source. First things first, um, you should add a new folder in your project called AI Mod or whatever you want to name it. Inside this project, you should add two source files for your pawn and your bot, respectively. It's a good idea to give them a distinctive prefix name, maybe the name of your mod or some other prefix that you will easily recognize. Um, this will help you when you want to use them in the Unreal Editor to actually set your bot's controller class and such things. First things first, we're going to have a look at the pawn. The pawn is basically the physical entity that interacts directly with the world. Pawns expose the same programming interface to all types of controllers, be they AI controllers or human controllers. Now, for our particular pawn, since we don't want to spend months or weeks writing a base pawn class, we're going to extend the UT pawn functionality, which is already rather complete. But the first important difference that we want to make is that we want to make our pawn placeable so that we can use it directly from the editor without having to do any sort of advanced scripting. So just put a placeable keyword in your class declaration. Secondly, and this is optional, we want you might want to expose the controller variable of your pawn to the the end the editor. You do this by uh, putting parentheses after your var keyword, and then declaring a type a type of class AI controller, giving it a name. We want to overwrite the set character class from info function to not do anything. This uh, is related to uh, class families in the Unreal Editor. Since we want to hard code our pawn to be just default mesh and such, we don't want anything to happen in this function. The post begin play event is triggered after level start and it basically does the initial setup for the bot. It's very important to notice here that we're calling the super classes post begin play. Um, this will properly re register the pawn and the bot with the Unreal. If this line is missing, the the mesh for the bot will show up, but it won't do anything, and it won't even show up in your radar or allow you to interact with it. Um, here we just um, set the ba the base class's controller class variable to whatever we got from our AI mod controller variable. Here we set up the default properties. Um, we're setting this to use the assets that are included with the Unreal Editor, the cathode meshes, and the male physics, etc. This is rather standard and for all intents and purposes you can copy paste it if you're not using your own assets yet. Um, this line here is also important, uh, if not your mesh won't show. And this is the default value for our bot. Now the bot we're implementing is rather simple and straightforward. It's a bot that as long as he doesn't see the player, he just stands around. But if he sees the player, he runs away using the actual path nodes in the level and the network between them. So there's some key variables we want. Well, first of all, we should specify that uh, this bot extends the UT bot because the UT bot has a ton of useful functionality that would be uh, rather a pain to re-implement. So some important variables we need, and uh, as you probably already know, you can only declare variables up here at the beginning of the class declaration. Um, we want distance to the player, just so we can have a threshold to have the bot run away or stop. We want the pawn for the player, for whenever he's spotted, and this is uh, just to expose our distance threshold. So, the way controllers work in Unreal is um, through a combination of built-in states and events for the most part. 
The built-in stage functionality is rather heavily used in controllers because it uh, executes independently from the main game loop, so your logic doesn't necessarily have to occur within one game frame, but it can, it can extend over any, any amount of time, and it can also extend over events such as uh, animations finishing it, finishing or other, other sorts of things. Um, the key functions that UTBot provides to create your own custom AI are execute what to do next, what to do next, and latent what to do next, which is called here. There is an important distinction between these three functions, namely execute what to do next occurs during a physics stick, and therefore functions that uh, modify the physics stick, such as moving or shooting, should not be executed there and are not allowed. This is because the logic that depends on the physics state will no longer be valid. What to do next actually triggers execute what to do next and the next tick. And this is where you would put logic that actually modifies the physics state. Latent what to do next is what you want to use when you're writing state code. This function actually encapsulates what to do next and uh, provides latent function functionality so that you can write your state code without depending on game time as usual. So on to the bot. This bot has two very simple states. First state, uh, first state and default, shown by the keyword auto, is standing. It's basically you stand around and do nothing. There is an event defined in this state, which is C player. When we see the player, we want to set our player pawn to the player that was seen and go to the running away state. The actual state processing, marked by the begin keyword, is simply stop moving. There is nothing more to this state. The running away has some simple logic. Basically, first of all, we're ignoring the C player. We don't, we're running away, we don't really care if we see him again. We're cal calculating our distance to the player, V size, which is the vector length of the subtraction of the positions. If the distance to the player is less than the threshold, then I'm actually going to change this here. If our distance is less than a threshold, we put a little entry in our log just to verify that it's working. And we call a utbot function called the move away from. Now this function from if you read the utbot code, you'll see that it's actually used to move away from other bots in certain situations, like moving away from vehicles or flight carriers. But for all intents and purposes, it's useful for our little coward. If the player is not within the threshold, then we can log that it's stopping, go to the standing state, and call what latent what to do next. This will eventually call execute what to do next, which sends send us to the standing state again. Now that we're finished with the bot, it's time to compile. So we'll click on compile. We just may want to make sure that there are no errors and that our package was compiled correctly, and then we'll move on to the Unreal Editor. Actually, before we go to the Unreal Editor, there is an important error that we should fix. This runaway distance variable will not be exposed to the Unreal Editor because you have no access to the actual controller class from the editor. So what we'll do is we'll move it to the pawn. Alright, I might have declared the AI mod controller variable. And then modify its bot to use the pawn's runaway. Since we're actually using a variable that's specific to our type of pawn, we need to cast the default pawn to our type. So we have AI pawn to pawn, saves pawn, pawn, and there we go. Compile again, and then go to the end of the letter. Okay, now that we're actually in the editor, we're going to open up the level that we created with the path nodes that it is used in our pathfinding tutorial. And this will allow the AI to use those same path nodes in the to get away from us. So, 
open up the content browser, go to the uncategorized category, select the, the AI mod font, right click, and add one, press F4 to open its properties, and you can see its different properties. So as far as controller class goes, we wanted to have our Coward Bot class and say threshold distance to start running of 100 and the limits. That should do it. So now we can test and see if our bot is actually in the way. Okay, now we're in a level. You can see our bot in the background. Let's go see how he reacts to our presence. There he goes, running away. Oh yeah. And you can see he's running away quite quickly. He still shoots somewhat, somewhat. Some of the U basic UT bot behavior gets through. But as you can see, his movement is clearly trying to get away from us. As soon as he's a certain distance away, that's probably about a thousand units right there, he stops. And that concludes our tutorial. Thank you very much.